I guess we'll get started. Come on in, grab a seat, just about to get started. If you're still in progress and you want to get this bought and everything, the text is just going to be up in the corner. So bit.ly chat.linuxfest northwest. All right, um, there's a lot of stuff to do. There is a huge demo portion that may or may not work. Um, I put a lot of stuff into this to challenge and hopefully break it, but it looks like it might be pulled on, might pull off. So I'm going to go over just a little bit before I start the actual talk portion, what we've got going on here, so you can understand a little more. So uh, this is all using um, a chat system called Slack. Some of you may have heard of it. Um, it's just a chat system. It's fairly popular. Um, it is not open source, but there are open source equivalents that have some comparisons and some rudimentary features. Um, but I'm using Slack because it's just easier to develop in right now. And that's what we use at work. So what we've got going, I have in DigitalOcean, I have a server running. And that's running a bot. And that bot is um, doing all the lab stuff. If any of you are participating and turning up a, a lab with Visual Studio in it, that's managing all that. There's another bot running on a Raspberry Pi over here that's running this game. And so it's a separate other bot. It's running off a Raspberry Pi, connected to this projector, and it's hooked up to Slack as well. So when you're in the Slack channel and you're doing the game commands, once you get in there, this is what you're communicating to. Um, and then over here, I'll be doing the same kind of thing that a virtual person would be doing or what you could be doing if you had your laptop up and were doing a VS Code instance. So hopefully that'll all pull together. It seems to be running right now. It's got to stay running for 45 minutes. We'll see how it goes. So today I'm talking about chat ops. Uh, who am I? My name is Richard Clark. I work for a company called Crafty Penguins. Um, we support companies and their developers that create web-based software that runs on Linux and the whole ecosystem around that. So if you need some support for your company for Linux, definitely reach out to us and we can help you out. So why am I giving this presentation? So a few stories to cover as to why I'm here doing this talk. About a pickaxe, slow things, and a presentation. So the story of a pickaxe. Uh, this is in the early days of the great DevOps wars, uh, when Docker was still in the shipyard and AWS had little competition. There was a client we had, and I still have, uh, most of their infrastructure was on bare metal at a colo, and they were starting to outgrow capacity. So a logical conclusion, let's just the cloud's here, let's go use the cloud, let's get some extra capacity without having to expand our colo and buy more hardware and commit to buying more hardware. They had a new QA stack for a new development project they wanted to turn up and they want to turn it up externally on Amazon. So the problem with Amazon is at the time and even now it costs an awful lot of money to run something on Amazon. You're paying a premium to run stuff on the cloud. So, but one of the advantages is you can just turn it off when you don't need it and stop the billing. So they wanted to save money. They wanted a system that could turn all this, the whole stack up and all the components. Well, they were already on their, um, in their infrastructure using early, Q, early container technology, OpenBZ. Uh, we used early versions of Proxmox. So most of the containers were already becoming cattle. So it wasn't too much of a problem to migrate them. But they weren't full on Docker one shot kind of things. So using a combination of Puppet, um, ADOS API, and Python, we developed scripts to turn the whole stack up and turn the whole stack down. All automated, uh, worked pretty smooth. All they had to do was shell into a management computer or management session, um, run the command. The command would start turning stuff up. When it's all done, it would spit out, you know, here's the URL that the stuff's on because it was on a dynamic URL at the time. Five, ten minutes is what it would take. And then they'd be off, do their stuff. Next time, shell in, turn it, da turn it down when you're done with it. At the time, we also had a chat system with this client called HipChat, um, a very popular chat system a few years back before Slack. And we would always be in communication with that client. 
helping them with their, we did dev, DevOps stuff, you know, at the time. SRE, you know, what became the term. We would be in helping them with code deploys when something went wrong, helping the developers debug what was going on um, in the QA stack, development stack, stuff like that. So they're always talking to us. And of course, human nature, when they wanted to turn this stack up, it wasn't too hard. They could just open a terminal, shell into the management console, probably go one level up in their history and run the start command. One level up again, run the stop command. But it's even easier to just go at Richard, hey, can you turn the stack up for me? <laughs> and in the early, at the beginning, this made sense because we were just, you know, things, bugs are being worked out. So typically to turn the stack up, maybe something would go wrong. They'd have to reach out to me anyway. So they just got in the habit of reaching out to me. Hey, can you turn the stack up? Yeah, sure. I open up a terminal, shell, shell in, run the command, sit and wait, five, 10 minutes. It comes up, push back to, up to hip chat. I'm gonna say Slack a lot instead of hip chat because that's just what's in my brain right now. Push it back up to hip chat, um, the URL, they go at it. And later on they say, hey, can you turn it down? And then I go run a few commands. And this became fairly quick to do, but I was still sitting waiting for the five, 10 minutes for the whole stack to turn up. What would normally happen is I go, they'd say this, I'd hit like a few, it would become almost muscle memory. You know, boom, 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 hit it, go, it's up and running. But then I would be like, I'm not gonna sit here and wait. I'm gonna go do something else. And I get doing something else and totally forget about it. And like an hour later, the stack's been up and running. And they'd say, hey, what happened to the stack? Is it up, is it ready? Oh yeah, so uh, yeah, there was a problem. Don't worry, I'll get right on it. There you go, here it is. It came up fast this time. And so I didn't wanna sit and wait around. So, I looked into HipChat, they had a, an API for doing some stuff, but they also had a simple thing you could just hit with curl and a token in the, in the request and a message. So, all right, go in there, add some stuff to the, to the scripting. At the very end, it just collected all the IP addresses and pushed, sent a curl command out and in their HipChat channel popped up the, the access stuff for the Amazon. So now I could just go in, get it going and just forget about it. It would take care of it. It would tell them what is up for that. So that was pretty good. But they would still reach out to me and say, hey, can you turn this up? So it was easy to tell Slack or HipChat just to send a curl. But now I had, I thought, can I let's automate it? So I don't even have to be involved in this process. They can just say something in Slack, something will watch that and something will act on it. That's a bot. So I made a bot. And that was that story. So a bot was born. Why is it called Pickaxe? All the development stuff they were doing right now is all codenamed around mountain themes. So the Pickaxe was something that would help you climb the mountains. So let's just dig into a bit to what a bot is. Um, just a program, acts as a user, typically in a chat system, watches for things to be said, runs code based on what's said, and or tells you interesting stuff that needs to be told. That's all it is, it's not that exciting. Um, Typically in a chat system was one of the bullet points there. For those of you who might have been waking up from a coma and for those watching at home, what's a chat or what is chat? It's basically communication with a keyboard at a distance. Uh, sometimes a very small distance. <laughs> chat is not new. Hence some of the talk about the title of the topic, everything old is new again. Uh, the first multi-user online chat, 1973. A picture of K and R there. Uh, internet relay chat, circa 1988. The granddaddy of all internet chat-based systems, still in use today. Um, and now chat's everywhere. It, it's ubiquitous, there's multiple platforms, and there's a bucket load of studies that someone got money for to say that it's probably the primary form of human communication right now. So that was one story. The other story is a slow thing. There once was a ticket system. It was slow as a system could be. To admin a job would take 10 minutes for an action that only took three. Some of you have probably been here. The great waiting spinners of doom. I would spend many hours, days, considerable amounts of my life waiting for spinners on our ticket system. 
So much so that one evening I just like went nuts and I sent a really nasty support letter into the company. And like, things got dead. Uh, Richard was told to calm down. <laughs> I just wanted to go home and I had, I, I, the job had been done. It took three minutes and I was literally waiting. Like, I gotta get out of here, I gotta pick up the kids and I'm waiting for the stupid thing to load. Click, 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 every click taking some time. So it's not just the loading, it's all the steps going into the system. It's a web-based system. Um, it has the word connect in front of its name. <laughs> <laughs> um, now typically I'm doing this stuff with a client, I'm already in Slack with the client. They're asking for something, I'm gonna do some action. Or they're asking for some help, because we don't, our help system with our clients is very one-on-one. -on -one. They don't just email a ticket and at some point in the next day or two, someone's gonna get it in triage and deal with it. We're very integrated with their team. So they have a problem, it's blocking them from doing their development process, we're on it right away and help them out. It is very distracting, but I need the efficiency to move this forward. So I'm already in the chat, I gotta switch to the browser into this connect block, <laughs> into this system, um, click, 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 wait, 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 great new ticket, fill in the ticket details, it's the same ticket details I do like 80% of the time, right, it's the same kind of stuff, market in progress, assign this thing, a time to that, didn't tick this box, tick that box, save it, wait, 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 okay, now work on the ticket, oh wait, you forgot something, go back, add the sign. So this was messing up me. So I'm pulling my hair out, and I don't have a lot of hair to pull out. So I need to do something. So a bot is born. Uh, the ticket system has a rich API. Slack has a rich API. I can write code. So I wrote code. So I'm in Slack, and I need to make a ticket. I can just go bang, ticket, the company, code, which you know we work with a lot of companies on a regular basis, but they're, we know them. Um, Type it in, subject of the ticket, details of the ticket, bang. It goes, it creates a ticket, it pushes an URL back out to me in Slack channel. I can click on that, and it takes me through all the layers to get to that already created ticket, already populated with the stuff I do 80% of the time. 20% of the time, I gotta click on that link and go tweak a few things. Maybe change the agreement or do some other weird thing or change the contact. But in general, I just do this and I can keep talking to the client. The ticket's made. It's in, a tick, you know, work doesn't exist if it's not on a ticket. The ticket's made now. It's not gonna get lost, it's in our process. It's not, hey, can you do this? Yeah, I'll get to it, don't worry. Ticket's made, it's on the boards. I wanna do a time in, that's like fixing stuff, right? Right then and there, in Slack, and open a channel, I'm working on their system, okay, it's up and ready. Um, right there, I just put in the time entry. And I found the ticket, bang, right there, close ticket. I didn't have to touch the ticket system and it's all done. The bot takes care of all this stuff. And a whole bunch of other things we just keep adding to it. So that was that story. The other one's about a presentation. So I'm at the Open Source Summit last year. Uh, the talk was Surviving the Chaos, a field guy. Uh, Andrew Hobden, King Tap. Great presentation. What was really cool is he had a pre-canned, ready-to-use environment for, for stuff to for the, try the stuff he's talking about. Um, which was really neat because he had a Linux container ready to go. It had the tooling. We were doing like kernel level um, chaos engineering. So injecting code, messing with the kernel, putting you know, bad data into the, the, the interfaces. Um, but So that part was all cool, but he had helper with him. And there was a bit of chaos in the talk because he had just had a piece of paper that he gave out to everybody and there was a code on it and you would go in and there would already be an instance up and running for you and you could shell in and do this stuff. But of course there were instances so you had a helper person running around helping with all that. I don't have a helper person here. Um, so I thought this would be a great thing to automate. And if I'm gonna automate something, might as well do it in a bot. And where could I use this stuff? What can I do with a lab? Where can I turn up a lab for people and let's try this? Now that I can do a presentation on turning up a lab for people. you making a bot, so that's what I've done. But you can't just, you know, making a bot to automate creating virtual labs for a presentation it isn't catchy. It's 
not going to get you on the speaker list. So you got to throw some buzzwords in. So DevOps. People like DevOps. Um, basically just software development and operations. If you know how to write code, you know a little bit about operations, you can do DevOps. Vice versa. Throw some creativity into operations and throw some operations organization and structure into creativity. You got DevOps. Two great things merged together. So because DevOps became popular, people try to do put words in front of ops. So DevOps, GitOps, ChatOps. Hey, I'm making a chatbot. I can talk about ChatOps. That's a good buzzword. So ChatOps is a buzzword for something most of us all been doing for ages. It's a chatbot. It just provides an alternative UI for a DevOps automation or for anything. The good thing about buzzwords is they want it. They think it's cutting edge. Who are they? It doesn't matter. They have the money. <laughs> and it's easy, to fr easy and free to get started making a bot and having it perform DevOps tasks for, tasks for you or really any handy tasks. The ticketing system is not a DevOps task. It's just me wanting to do stuff quicker and making a tool to do it. So as soon as you have some kind of delay in your organization and you can make a bot to do it, make a bot to do it. Hook it up to chat and it's an easy interface. Whatever chat system you've got, you can write bots to IRC, you can write bots to Mattermost, you can write bots to Slack. Doesn't matter, just make a bot. Don't make a bot to Microsoft chat. <laughs> Hangouts, Teams, whatever, I can't remember what it's called. Right? Thank you. Uh, it's just a great way to provide a UI. It's simple, it's already can. People know how to use it. And you can't put a lot of bells and whistles in it because it's not of that rich an environment. You gotta be able to do it in a word, in a phrase. And you wanna throw some natural language processing in there, you can get creative and, you know, in chat, do the same thing you're like your Amazon Alexa is doing, but just do it with text. It's easier to develop. So, to wrap up the stories, um, bots have removed a lot of repetition for me. Going in and just doing things over and over again, just, it, it's gonna take care of it. Um, this saved me a lot of time. I'm not waiting for spinners. They can, it can wait for the spinner. Um, I made a bot to help manage this demo. Bots are easy, and I'll show you. So, this is from the beginning. You can get in there again if you want. Uh, Bitly, chat, Linux Best Northwest. Basically, get into the channel. We've got three, four people in the Thunderdome channel right now. So I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna to go to this link. Get it a full screen. If you went to the link, this is what you're seeing. There's the invite code to get you into the chat. You'll have to give it your email. Sorry, this is, if people want your email nowadays. You can uninstall it and maybe they'll forget about you. Claim some GDPR stuff, I don't know. Once you're there, you should be able to go in, be already invited into the Thunderdome channel. So you'll see that, just select it. And if you're playing along with a computer, um, or even if you're not, you want to try loading VS Code in JavaScript on your phone, <laughs> why not, right? This is your chance to do it. Um, and then when you're there, go at labbot make lab, and it will send you a direct message with the details of what's going on. If things are working good, it's going to first reach out to DigitalOcean, and by the way, thanks to DigitalOcean for hooking me up with a 100 limit. Uh, didn't, obviously, I don't need it. Um, but they were like, no, 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 you can't have 100 instances. No, 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 no. You have to do a billing cycle. But I already throwed like $35 cash in there. So I'd have to grind through $35 at a few cents, of, a few cents an hour and then wait for a whole month for a billing cycle to go through before I was approved. So I told them I'm giving a chat. I could mention you guys. So I mentioned them. So we have, I'm not, they didn't give me free, de free ones. I'm paying for these 100 licenses, so you might as well use them. Um, so you get a PM, and in that, you'll see some details about what's going to happen, and you'll get an URL. Um, the, H, the one with the actual URL might not render. Um, the bot also, after reaching out DigitalOcean, turning it up, reaches out to um, Cloudflare DNS with an API, and creates an A record based on the IP. At like two in the morning last night, this was working really smooth. But four in the afternoon, 
I couldn't get the A record to show up for the life of me. So that's why it's pushing out an IP address. That's also why it's not HTTPS. I don't have, I didn't have enough time to, re to make the bot do all that kind of stuff and try and get a, uh, an alias record with the IP in there. The URL is unique to your Slack ID. Once you're in there, we're gonna go get a legacy token and then there'll be a VS Code instance and we'll open to continue. So let's run all these things through. I'm gonna start from the point where I already have a user created. I am in there. It is spicy wings. All right, so I'm gonna make a lab. So I'm gonna go at lab bot make, make what? Make lab. It was obvious. And what you would see, for those playing a lot at home, it says here what's going on. Let me zoom this in. So making a lab for that user ID. Starting instance creation. So it's out to Docker right now. Has anyone here made a lab? I said someone, people are doing it. Did labs show up? Awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo. All right. Mine's still starting. There, I, was, I didn't get to do like a thundering herd test on this stuff. So <laughs> there's some crazy threading going on. So, you know, let's, let's, let's hope. We can go have a look at the actual bot running this stuff. It's sitting, hit, pinning, pinging the API, waiting for stuff to happen. Oh, doing health check. It's exciting. Oh, the health check means that the URL actually resolved. So I'm gonna go open it. This also uses an awful lot of internet, so conference Wi-Fi to the test. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I, I have my own um, hardwired Wi-Fi here, which worked out. So there I am. This is Visual Studio Code. Um, Coder.com makes this awesome package. Uh, you can do run it in a Docker. If you want to run Visual Studio Code in a browser hosted, you can do this. So this is just running right now on the DigitalOcean instance that was just stood up and there's code already pre-injected into this, ready to go for us to work on. So you will then go in and get yourself a key. Um, this is where you have to get a legacy token. Now Slack is changing legacy tokens to not be available anymore. So you won't actually be able to get a token for yourself, but you go and make a full on bot app in your channel and you can go from there. I'm sure it's some way of them extracting more money from you somehow. Um, because you used to be able to have a token for a user and you got as many users as you want, which would probably bypass the bot limit. So that's probably where that's coming from. Um, okay, so I'm going to open this another lab, another window. So you're going to go into the local settings. Let me zoom this in. Oh, I can. Glorious. And there's in the local settings.py, this is all being written in Python. If you don't read Python, read Python, eh, it should be okay. You're not gonna be doing a lot of crazy stuff here and most of it's already boilerplated for you. Uh, if you know Python, <laughs> have at it. So in the local settings, inside these checkboxes, put in the token that you got from go get a legacy token step. And then when you're done, get into the bot. All right, so. Go to my notes. Copy my token. I'm going to paste it in there. I'm not doing it on, during the presentation. You're not going to, get to see the thing because I felt people would have a field day with that. I'm going to save it. Uh, I don't use VS Code, so give me a, give me a second here. All right, it's saved. So I'm in bot.py right now. To use this demo, here's just a recap of the stuff that's there. Right, is this the new link? 
Yeah. All right. Uh, if you go to the, over here, to the git section, you can actually go pull a new version of the code. It doesn't look any different. Ah, well, I don't think I changed anything much in there. All right, let's skip it. So talks about in the bang what to do, and you're just gonna hit F5 to run this code. Can I move this over? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, I'm only working on this. So I'm using a, a framework called um, Slack Machine. Uh, it is awesome. If you're gonna be doing anything with Slack, and Slack is an easy way to get someone to pay you to make a bot, Slack Machine is your repository. Um, I've done a few commits to it to fix some bugs. Um, there are others. I found this one the best after making a lot of bots. And it has a cool logo. <laughs> that was the highlight. I, oh, I gotta, I gotta make this work. If it doesn't work, I gotta help make it work. Because it's got the cool logo. <laughs> so, to make a bot, you just install this package and you write a little bit of Python. It's really simple. You make a class that extends the base plugin they've got. Um, and here is... Here's the thing. This is this all here is one command. I'm gonna it's tagged with a regex to match. So typing in adding winner winner to my bot or my username will reply with chicken dinner. Let's give it a try. So here I am. I'm going to open up other Slack. I'm gonna go into the Thunderdome. No, it's gonna go right into Spicy here. Oh. There. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here I am just with this. There's not a lot of activity in it. I was concerned there would be like thousands of people in there making containers and spamming the channel. You wouldn't get to see this stuff, so I made a separate channel. So I'm going to go at spicy wings. Winner, winner, and nothing happens. That's exactly what's not supposed to happen. Did I spell it right? Did I do it right? Oh, I did do it right. Oh, I'm not actually running the bot. There we go. So, F5. Debug, start. Where's my terminal? There we go. All right, the bot's running. Let's go back into the channel. Yay. So that's the bot responding. Thank you, thank you. And that's it for today. Have a good day. <laughs> All right, let's continue. So that is an easy way to make a response command. Uh, another thing you can do, so that's respond to, you can just passively listen. So if you're running this bot code, and we go into the Thunderdome here, Every time it passively sees any bot that's running would respond to that. All right, so that's the bot running and responds to it. Um, and it's just regex. The other thing you can do, you can get fancier with the regex and capture information. So this is how you make the bot interactive. So now it's going to respond. Um, it has to message directly to the, to the bot. And you have to give it a phrase or a command. So it's going to be at spicy wings, uh, a space, and an ender. And does it respond? No. Am I still running it? We're not seeing your chat conversation. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm sitting there on the second laptop. Thunderdome. Oh, I forgot the actual command. C 
second epic win. All right. So that's how you can get it to do different things. So what we have running in the background, I mentioned, is a bot. And I'm going to reset. You can't see this one. This is my side. Admin. Uh, reset. If you're in the channel, the game has started. The question is the answer. All you have to do is type pound dollar exclamation point game the the number so that answers the question and a color and your name will show up on there. I'll give you some chances to actually do it. Don't forget the color. You have to match the regex perfectly. Boom. So this thing's watching Slack, it's watching the channel, it waits for the stuff, changes its color on the screen. And there will be a new question. Let's bump it up a bit. So I'm going to change some parameters so it goes quicker. We still have to wait for the first one. All right, there's a math testing question. If you want your name, type it in. It's a race. Jonathan and Trolley are going. Oh no, something went wrong. Don't put in an X. Just like the example, Octothorpe Hex. It has been found. Name again. Here we go. All right. You now know what you need to do. The challenges will get harder. So the goal is we want to make a bot that's going to do this for us. So let's go in and extend this a little bit. I've already extended it, so I'm going to go to a whole new window here. If you happen to put a swear word in your name, it will try and filter it out. Don't go change your name for swear word just to test it, though. <laughs> that part is not on the stream. I'm not being recorded, so we're mostly safe. No, not game. I don't use VM, v, VS code. So here's my plugin. So what we want to do is we want to have the bot capture a regex that's going to match what the bot is, the other bot is spewing out. So let's pop back into the channel. So we can see that somewhere the game bot's going to spit out this phrase. The question is, and then in quotes, it's going to be a question. And it's going to look like um, something kind, some kind of math. So what can we do to make the bot respond to that? Well, we're going to go in and we're going to make a new function. And we're going to do it really easy. I'm going to copy paste this one. Go into my VS code. Slap it in and see if this works. Oh, yay, pasting at a distance. So here's a new one. It's going to listen to this phrase. The question is, and then inside quotes, it's going to capture and label a regex variable, which gets passed down to the function as formula. So it's going to pull out formula, what's ever in between the quotes, and it's going to call this function. The function is going to pick a random color, and I'm going to use eval. I'm doing that because it's just really easy to use. Don't do this in practice. This lets you run raw Python from whatever someone who may have a bend on in Slack run code. So RM, RF, whatever you want to do. Right. That's why I'm running it in a disposable instance. 
So it runs eval, and then it's going to put the game back. So is anyone running a bot? Is someone answering the question automatically? No? All right, well, let's see if it works for me. Stop. That's what I want. There we go. Debug. Start debugging. So theoretically, it's going to listen for this stuff as soon as it sees a question. So someone's got to answer the question there. <laughs> Come on, don't make me do math. Someone answer the question. All right. If this works, the bot is going to see the thing and guess. It didn't. Maybe you can make your bot better. Let's have a look. Random is not defined. <laughs> this is obviously not the same code version I was running. Oh yeah, I just copy pasted it in. That's why, I forgot to do this. Y'all are gonna be vanquished real soon. If someone's coding, you better beat me to it. All right, save. What's the key? Uh, save. I don't know how to exit VS Code. It's a Vim joke. All right. We wait. Back to the Thunderdome. Spicy Wings got in there, answered it. Bang! Bang! Spicy Wings, wings rules the board. So this is the point when if we had like an hour, uh, you'd spend the rest of the time and you all had workstations <laughs> making a cool bot to fight each other in the Thunderdome. There's a problem with this bot, and we might see it. Let me, let me increase the rate of difficulty, because now it's got like every 20 questions. So let's make it get difficult every two questions. Uh, two. So it's just doing a mod two. Every two questions, it's going to increase the difficulty. Well, difficulty has been increased to two. Now there's some minuses getting thrown in. Now, oh, what's going on? Why didn't the bot answer that? Invalid syntax. I'm doing an eval right down there. That's a human x. That's a human multiply, not a machine multiply. So the bot has failed. This is where now people are making a bot and they're just cheating by copying mine. We'd have to go fix that now. Can't just get away with an eval. You've got to change some stuff. All right. So that's how you make a bot. That was super simple. You can make a bot to do whatever you need to do and you just write some code. You don't have to do it in Python. There are some cool things out there. There's a bot builder kit that's written in JavaScript. Um, if you're a Node JavaScript environment fan, go for it. You know, you can, and they, the, that library, bot, bot builder, yeah, I think so. Um, they have a, they'll interface to a whole bunch of different platforms as well. So check it out. And that is pretty much that. So at the end, go build a bot. Uh, some things I'd like to thank here. Uh, the presentation framework that I use is reveal.js. Uh, it's pretty awesome. You just write everything in HTML and CSS and you got yourself a presentation. Commit it in, check it in, etc. Do whatever you want. Uh, Slack machine, awesome library for running Slack bots. Crafty Penguins, the company I work for, uh, doing great Linux stuff, allows me to do things like this. Um, we enjoy doing it, our team likes it. If you need some stuff done, reach out to us, we can hook you up. Uh, thanks to me, oh, it all worked. I don't suck, <laughs> yay. Uh, you can reach out to me, I'm at, at crickcode on Twitter. Um, and the other details of the beginning slide. You can reach out to me at Crafty Penguins as well. Uh, craftypenguins.net. Not just Google Crafty Penguins and like Linux, and you'll probably get to it. Just Google Crafty Penguins, you're probably going to wind up an art supply company. They might be able to help you out with Linux. Give them a try. Um, they can certainly help you out with like doing a nice Fabergé penguin. Uh, you guys, thanks for coming. It's early morning on a Sunday, and I, it started out, it looked like I had the three people coming. And you know, those three who are gonna get an awesome demo, and if it busted, no one would know. 
uh, Slack. Uh, Slack has a really awesome API. Um, you know, you, okay, you get what you pay for. I'd rather IRC um, three. Uh, thanks for giving me hope that there's an alternative. Um, much like Half-Life three, it's giving me hope. <laughs> um, my old, old MSI laptop just hooked up. There's no flickering. Everything just worked. Um, the guys were in here getting ready early because stuff was not working. Hook up the old brute workforce, plug in the HDMI, it's been solid the whole time. Um, everything else I didn't mention, oh yeah, and DigitalOcean hooking me up with a 100 instance limit, and whatever else I couldn't think of. Questions? Awesome. Well, that's it. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. The instances, if you have them running, will be deleted shortly. <laughs> Thank you.